Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to MedEd Insights. I'm really excited to have the next interview series for you guys here. And in today's video, really fortunate to be joined by Dr. Tarek Azam, um, who is currently one of the internal medicine chief residents up here at Mayo Clinic and someone who I worked with last year during my prelim year. And so we're going to be doing kind of a two part video series here. In this first part, we're going to be talking just about internal medicine and Tarek's experience as um, an intern is going through the program and then in the second video we're going to break down some more specifics about Mayo's program and kind of the application process just taking advantage of Tarek's insight as one of the chiefs. So if you're interested in internal medicine or just want to hear more about the program up here and Dr. Ozum's background then stick around and watch the rest of this video and check out the other one. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today. I um, really appreciate you taking the time out of the busy schedule I know with interview season and everything. Yeah. So start off, just kind of introduce yourself, your medical school background, undergrad, kind of how you ended up where you are today. Like you said, my name is Tarek Azam. I'm one of the chiefs at uh, Mayo. And uh, undergraduate, I went to the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and I'd grown up in Chicago, so not too far from home. Uh, after undergrad, I taught with uh, Teach for America in Chicago. I taught. Oh. high school uh, chemistry and environmental science for two years in Chicago That's public. Nice. After that, I moved east to Columbus, Ohio for, to, for medical school at Ohio State. Nice. Uh, four great years in Columbus later, and uh, then I drove up here and uh, been here ever since, and I'm loving it. So. Nice. Tell me next, um, did you know that you always wanted to be a doctor, or was there anything that you thought you might do before you kind of landed on a career in medicine? I always thought I wanted to be a doctor going through elementary school, high school. Uh, my, my mom's a pathologist, so oh, okay. I kind of modeled myself after that. In undergraduate, I did all the pre-med things and research and MCAT and all that sort of stuff. But mm -hmm. my, my senior year of college, now this is I think 2008, 2009, when it came down to it, I sat down to write my personal statement and it wasn't good. For med school? For medical school, okay. exactly. Yeah. Nothing really came out. I couldn't... Mm -hmm. I couldn't really tell you a uh, cohesive, compelling story of why I wanted to be a physician. At the same time, I was recruited by Teach for America. Okay. And compared to medical school, I could really tell you I was passionate about it, and I had a good mm -hmm. reason to do it, and I really wanted to. So I decided to put medical school on hold, and I said, if I come back to it, great. If I don't, also great. And then I went off to teach. While I was teaching, uh, I, I was teaching in a very... Uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged area, mm -hmm. uh, some of the uh, worst neighborhoods of Chicago uh, in terms of crime and poverty. And as a high school teacher, you know, I realized that educational disparities, healthcare disparities, opportunity disparities, those things are all just different facets of the, mm, uh, of the, of the problem of uh, poverty and sure. uh, uh, socioeconomic injustice. Mm -hmm. And so what I saw there was a lot of uh, disparities in healthcare. One of my students, she had asthma, and she would frequently, maybe once every couple of months, miss three, four days of school because she was yeah. sick. Turns out she'd run out of her controller medication yeah. and would end up going to the emergency room, being on prednisone. Uh, another one of my students, he would frequently miss school like two, three days at a time, mm -hmm. uh, every several weeks. And it turned out that it was because his grandmother took care of his uh, like very young siblings. Every time she got hospitalized, uh, they didn't have any other anyone else to take care of the children, and so he home. would stay home. Yeah. And so seeing that, I was like, okay, you know what? I now I have a reason to go to medical. Something to really identify yeah. with, yeah, and connect to. Yeah. That's and, awesome. And so then uh, you know I applied around, and Ohio State was. Uh, uh, gracious enough to uh, let me in, <laughs> yeah. so I uh, I ended up in Columbus and uh, nice. I I loved it there and yeah that's nice. kind of how I got there. yeah I mean I it took me two tries to get into medical school yeah. and I kind of had that same mindset of well if it's meant to happen then it'll happen and so yeah. it, looking back I'm sure it gives you a lot of cool experience and now being one of the chiefs yeah. you get to do a lot of teaching and still kind yeah. of fulfill so I'm sure it ended up working out really well tell me a little bit before we get into kind of the specifics of internal yeah. medicine. What made you interested in internal medicine and what were some of the kind of key decision points that led you to that as a residency and career path for now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, uh, 
I didn't go into medical school wanting to be an internist. I wanted mm-hmm. to be. Uh, I went in wanting to be a radiologist. Okay. But within the first few weeks, I realized that that was really discordant with who I am yeah. and what I want out of my career. Sure. And so then I was like, okay, I want to be on the front lines. I want to be an emergency medicine doctor. Okay. Big and difference. Then, oh yeah, exactly. And then I was, you know, doing uh, activities and that and shadowing and all that and mm-hmm. you know that kind of went through my second year and third year you finally get on the boards and yep. I started an uh, OBGYN okay. and I loved it. I loved urogynecology. I thought I was going to be a urogyne surgeon yeah. and I was like, this is awesome. I'm going to do this. My next rotation was general surgery and um, I did you know general GI surgery and then I was like, this is awesome. I want to be a trauma <laughs> surgeon because you did, took trauma call. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is great. Uh, and then my next rotation was psychiatry. Uh, for a few days, I even considered being a psychiatrist. Then it was neurology, and I was like, wow, yeah. movement disorders are pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, I got to internal medicine, uh, a few weeks of hospital medicine, and a few weeks of inpatient cardiology. And I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, this is it. Kind of found your calling. Yeah. That's that's it because nice. the, the, the part of it that I liked was you kind of had to be a little bit good at pretty much everything. Yeah. You have to sure. be familiar with everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're kind of the main advocate for the patients in and out of the hospital. Yeah. You're kind of their, their quarterback yeah. in a sense, leading yeah. their care. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. And so uh, I, I did that and went on from there to family medicine and pediatrics and didn't change my mind again, which was nice. uh, a relief uh, yeah. because it was getting close to application time. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I signed up for my sub eyes and got letters of recommendation and uh, clicked submit September 15, 2014. I wow. Think. That's yeah. a good memory. Yeah. Nice. That's a cool story. And yeah. I'm sure something a lot of people watching can identify Absolutely. with. It's just going through and kind of liking everything you do. Yeah. But it's reassuring for people watching that ultimately you kind of find your home, you find your yeah. place and things kind of click and sink in. So there's a lot of different career paths people can go from internal medicine. And it's kind of one of the common, of course, kind of first steps before a lot of different fellowships. Mm-hmm. And so we're not going to talk specifically about the fellowships, but are you planning to pursue a fellowship and what's kind of your end goal in terms of what you want to be doing for your career? So it's funny. You should ask that right after we talked about medical school, because again, I came in into residency wanting to do pulmonary critical care. Okay. And I was, Dead set on that. I got a research project early on. The program really helped connect us with mentors. Um, I started working on that, and that went really well. But then halfway through my first year after my inpatient oncology rotation, I was like, well, actually, maybe I want to do oncology. It sounds familiar. So, it, very familiar. Sounds familiar. It really <laughs> is. And then second year rolls around, and I'm like, huh, hematology is pretty cool. And so then I decided, you know what? Hematology is what I want to do, and I mm-hmm. want to be a bone marrow transplant doc. And so then I switched everything up, got projects in heme, mm-hmm. um, met with a bunch of people in heme, did all these electives. I think cumulatively, I've done probably about six months of hematology and oncology wow. um, through residency. All right, fast forward to the beginning of third year. I've already I had already been selected as chief, so I knew I had an additional year. Yeah. So I was going along with hematology. And then I did my senior Mickey month, and I was like, "Yeah, Ugh. I was with you on that month." You, you were, yeah. you were. So, so you you know how excited I was and running yeah. around and yeah. just having so much fun. Uh, weird thing to say about the ICU, but the enjoyment that you get yeah. as a as a physician mm-hmm. has, is central to your identity. Sure. Uh, and so I was like, "This is actually what I want to do." So then I flipped it back to pulmonary critical care. I told all the pulmonary people, they were very excited, and we had a bunch of discussions and a couple more projects. Um, And then I got to my senior cardiology month, and I was like, oh no, not again. Here we go. (laughs) Here we go. So essentially what happened was I looked back and I said, why do I like cardiology so much? And what it really came down to was it is the most, um, uh, I guess focused manipulation of physiology mm-hmm. that you can really have sure you know hemodynamics mm-hmm. um in particular are very interesting to me and that was always the part i liked about critical care yeah. hypotension using ultrasound for echocardiography yeah. lots of medications medications of procedures, procedures with you know, lines and everything yeah, yeah. yeah and so then i said you know what i think this is right i had a Several discussions with my wife, who at, by this point was not surprised by me changing my yeah. mind. <laughs> and once uh, she and I had discussed, I met with a number of, first I met with our program director, internal mm-hmm. medicine, just to say, hey, am I crazy for doing this? And sure. she was very supportive. 
met with a bunch of my uh, mentors in cardiology. They they were really supportive, and then uh, switched my application around. Nice. The hardest part was telling my mentors in pulmonary critical care and in hematology yeah. that I was no longer going to either of those fields. And they were very supportive. They said, you know, look, you have to do what's right for you and you have to uh, 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 do what makes you happy. So they've been very sure. supportive throughout the whole process. Nice. So you mentioned that um, you decided kind of part of that time through to do the chief year. Yes. So what first, what made you interested in wanting to be a chief resident mm -hmm. and what kind of led you to that decision? I've always been involved at like administrative educational stuff, even mm -hmm. since, um, gosh, since high school. Yeah. As a peer mentor in high school and college, I was on all sorts of uh, committees and whatnot. Mm -hmm. In medical school, I was actually president of our, like the student body of all the like medical school, law school, pharmacy oh. school, et cetera, for two years. And so I had a lot of experience with yeah. uh academic administration mm -hmm. and I wanted to continue using that skill set and yeah. um, you know kind of continue my passion for teaching and so it was a natural fit as soon as I came in here I started talking to former chiefs and current chiefs about what it looks like at Mayo and mm -hmm. what the benefits are what's difficult about it and you know I essentially put my name in the hat pretty early on yeah. I just let people nice. know during feedback I said look you know, do you have any advice for me? I want to be a chief resident. Mm -hmm. And it was very well received. And second year I was nominated. I interviewed and then I was selected. Nice. That's awesome. So, Congrats. Yeah, no, it's a yeah. huge honor to be, yeah. you know, given that much kind of ability to influence the program and yeah. the residents. So it's really cool. Talk a little bit just, I know your end goal is kind of the cardiology yeah. side of things, but just general internal medicine. How would you describe what an internist does to, let's say, your grandmother who hasn't sat in a day of medical school ever? Yeah. An internist is the doctor who kind of quarterbacks your care. Okay. Uh, so they make sure that your medicines are the right ones that you're supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. They're the first ones that kind of help you work through any sort of medical problems that you're having. Mm -hmm. And then they coordinate all the other doctors who may be needed in your care. Sure. And they do that in the hospital and outside. Okay. So it sounds kind of similar to like family medicine. Yeah. So I'm sure there's a lot of people who think, you know, they want to do primary care. Mm -hmm. Should I do family medicine? Should I do internal medicine? Yeah. What are some of the differences that stand out to you between those two fields in terms of which path someone might want to pursue? So family medicine um, and internal medicine training are both the same length of time. They're both three years. Okay. Um, family medicine is split between adult medicine, mm -hmm. um, pediatric medicine, and also uh, obstetrics, gynecology, um, some surgical training, okay. uh, sports medicine, a number of different things. So they, they do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. um, internists are specifically the physicians who take care of adults. Um, and, and as such, we probably have more experience in dealing with more complex um, diseases sure. and more complex uh, conditions okay. uh, than most family medicine doctors. That being said, there's excellent family medicine doctors, yeah. but just by nature of where we focus our training on, um, there's different strengths. For example, okay. I'm not particularly well-versed in obstetrics, sure. and I'm not well-versed at all in pediatrics, in kids, yeah. uh, and okay. whereas I, I probably have a greater breadth and depth of knowledge when it comes to adult medicine. Okay. So certainly, too, if someone wants to ultimately be a gastroenterologist or an oncologist, you have to do yes. internal medicine. Yeah. but. I think that is a key point. If you want to work with kids or you want to yeah. be doing more like labor and delivery, mm -hmm. maybe think family medicine. Yeah. But if you want to focus more on the adult and kind of those complex diagnostic mm -hmm. challenges and kind of more in-depth problems, then maybe internal medicine is the path for you. Absolutely. You mentioned there's different practice settings, yeah. kind of inpatient versus outpatient. What's sort of the typical daily routine for an inpatient internist in the hospital? There's essentially two practice models for people in the hospital. One is the sort of old school model where you do some time in clinic and then you do some time in the hospital. Okay, so same day kind of splitting your time. Exactly. Um, there's a slightly different one where you do maybe eight weeks of hospital time per year mm -hmm. and the rest you're outpatient. And then there's a, a, I guess, more recent development, I guess, over the last decade or so of hospital medicine where these are doctors who just work in the hospital. Okay. Um, and so they they work generally seven days on, mm -hmm. and then they have seven days off. Okay. Um, and they take care of a number of patients. It varies by which hospital sure. you're at. 
and uh, they admit patients, they take care of them on a day-to-day -day basis, come up with a plan, come up with the diagnostics, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really are the primary go-to person in the hospital for a patient who's in the hospital. Nice. Yeah. And then in the outpatient setting, I'm guessing it's pretty much just clinic. You're seeing patients yeah. for follow-ups, for initial checkups, yeah. you know, yearly physicals, kind of yeah. any and all of the above. So, Acute care, whatever, whatever yeah. comes in. It's a lot of different variety that oh, you absolutely. can see in the field, absolutely. definitely. All right, so we've kind of talked about the typical kind of day in the life routine of an internist what are some of your favorite parts about internal medicine you've kind of touched on some of them but what what makes you excited to be in internal medicine so I think knowing a lot about a lot of things is what I what I enjoy okay. because then when a patient comes to me I can speak intelligently on pretty much any complaint that they have. Yeah, okay. Even though I may not be an expert in all those things, mm -hmm. I can at least start an initial diagnostic workup for them and get yeah. them to the right people. Patients really respect when, even if you don't know everything, you can start them out. Mm -hmm. um, most folks don't want to be immediately farmed out to a subspecialist. Sure. And so when I tell patients, I'm, I'm usually fairly honest with them. I say, hey, um, I think we should do X, Y, and Z first. Yeah. But if we don't find an answer there, it'll kind of be beyond my level of expertise and we'll find somebody else who can help you out in that. Sure. So that's part one. Part two is um, honestly the goals of care discussions with patients. Oh, yeah. and, and this, you know, when we say that, we think about, oh, people in the hospital in the ICU who are dying. And that that is a big part of it. And mm -hmm. I do find a lot of... Um, uh, uh, sort of satisfaction of a job well done in those situations, but also in clinic where, you know, you have some folks who are older, some folks who are younger, yeah. you are coming in with a variety of issues and just talking to them, one person to another about what, what do you expect to happen? Yeah. What would you like to happen? What do they want? What do they want? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then kind of trying to match that Yeah. Um, and trying to, temper their expectations sometimes or honestly sometimes show them that it's not that bad sure um, and so that those conversations i actually really enjoy those you, you kind of dread those when you're an intern because mm -hmm. those are hard conversations yeah uh, from time to time you don't know enough to to speak intelligently about a lot of things Pro and, yeah about prognosis exactly you know. yeah. yeah treatment availability right. or what does this medication do or yeah but as you become more of an expert, I actually find a lot more joy in those discussions with patients than in just refilling medications sure. or prescribing things. Yeah, yeah no, I think that's awesome. I, that was probably the biggest shock for me of intern year was yeah. just that emotional um, you know, intuition and that just emotional insight yeah. that you have to have in all those situations and something they don't really teach you in medical school, aside yeah. from the like sit down, break bad news, you yeah. know, one time thing. Um, but yeah, you know, that's true. Like the more human you can be and the more just like, yeah, I can help you. Like, yeah. what, what do you want out of this? Yeah. Like, I'm not, I, you don't have to be this authority figure yeah. of a doctor. You can kind of be just another person talking to them. And so that's awesome. All right. So I want to finish off. You've had a pretty impressive journey to where you're at right now from, Thank you know, your experiences after college and kind of having this period where you weren't sure what was going to happen with medicine to, you know, being here at Mayo and now being a chief and applying to fellowships. If you've got just a med student in front of you, yeah. what just some general wisdom, tips, things you picked up and mm -hmm. would share with people who are going through this really long, arduous process and mm -hmm. just maybe struggling, maybe not having the motivation, what just wisdom would you share with them? Mm -hmm. So first, you know, acknowledging that it is a difficult process. There's no mm -hmm. question about that. And I think that the best thing I learned was probably around my first or second year of medical school from a, a friend of mine who was a couple of years ahead of me. And essentially what that was is uh, don't compare your insides to somebody else's outside. And what, what, what that means is kind of you'll be sitting in the library. You'll get there at 10 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock in the morning, whatever it is. And there'll be somebody who's been there since 7. You'll leave at 4 or 5. That person will still be there. Uh, after an exam, you'll be talking, someone will be talking about how they got everything right. Another person will talk about how they got everything wrong. Somebody else is going to be talking about these research projects. Somebody else is going to be talking about this volunteer trip. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's very easy to slip into, oh, gosh, am I not good enough? Am I not yeah. supposed to be here? Comparing yourself to everybody. Exactly. Yeah. So don't compare what you're feeling on the inside to what other people are showing on the outside. Um, because you don't know what struggles they're going through on the inside, and they don't know how, or excuse me, you don't know how you look on the outside. Sure. So you may be downplaying your own strengths, 
And remember, you got into medical school off of your uh, uh, accomplishments and achievements mm-hmm. and uh, success. And uh, always remember that, that you deserve to be there as much as the next person. Yeah. And I, I think once I started thinking like that, that sort of competitive nature of medical school kind of just washed away and it become more about, all right, what do I want to get out of this? What's yeah. important to me? Why are you school? here? And yeah. what's, what are you trying to do? Exactly. That's awesome advice. I think that's really cool and something yeah. that people can identify with and, and hopefully kind of get more motivated yeah. from and learn from. So, well, thank you so much for this little sit down and chat. Yeah. Um, don't forget to check out in part two of this, we're going to talk more specifics kind of about the application process, Mayo's internal medicine program, just taking advantage of um, Tarek's insight as one of the chief residents. So go check out that video if you're interested. And as always, thanks for watching and thank you very much for being here today. Thank you.